way. But um, he thinks that it's an important heritage building. Uh, and I'm, I'm not a heritage expert, but I would concur with that. It's uh, certainly part of uh, my efforts this week and um, an interesting building. Um, it's been nominated by Fine Happy Heritage Trust for listing as a category to this It's not listed as mine. Um, and it's probably uh, worth saying that the exterior of the building is, is the, and the seating area, which holds most of the architectural heritage value, mm -hmm. not the inside of the building. Mm -hmm. um, there's quite a lot of history that's still to be researched about the building and its construction. Uh, there's been reports, for example, of it being built somewhere else and being in its current position uh, by practice and rollers. But there's other reports which, uh, which have been uh, from uh, a local source which said when they were a child they visited their grandfather building it where it is now. So um, we don't know all the story about, about it. I'm sure this uh, is quite a it's still, still up, still to unearth uh, uh, probably the entire happy. Subsequently. I've been given both stories, I've been given the stories of it being moved by a horse and pollies and rollers by Mr. Johans um, and, <coughs> and McElwain's. There is, so who knows exactly what the story is. Right, thank you. Um, okay, so we've got two or three pages here of the analysis of the existing grandstand. And we've gone through uh, the structural reports and the architectural reports that have been made so far, and also from our own observation, um, looking at the, the detail and, and the condition of where it is at the moment. Um, I, I'm not going to read through in all great detail everything here, but I'll give some uh, headlines about it. First of all, um, the structural condition to make it um, safe and um, compliant with uh, current uh, seismic requirements, it would need a deal of strengthening, um, both in its uh, superstructure and probably in its foundations. Um, these engineers have listed several uh, issues uh, that have to be put right, which is probably pointed on that. On that page, um, but it should be noted that the condition is probably worse than since that report was done many years ago, and it would need uh, a new investigation done by a seismic engineer. Because since 2011, there are different protocols involved mm -hmm. in the way that seismic reports are supposed to be done, <coughs> as you'll we'll see. So that, that is something that is needed. Uh, but we have tried to, uh, first of all, go with what was reported earlier, and then from the peer review that our company sort of engineering did, to uh, extrapolate those into values that the US has put into the cost of the project. Um, if we do need uh, foundation strengthening, and that is most likely, we'll also need to do a technical review. The ramp seating is uh, quite a, a, a major heritage feature of the building. So it's um, it, it's all timber construction. We know uh, that the main beams that support it are uh, Rima. Uh, and they're a bit, although the engineers are not too worried about them uh, in any way, uh, they're a bit springy. Um, and they're boarded out with, with uh, foam roof boarding. And then there's timber bleachers on top. Uh, I'm not sure what those bleachers are made of. I, I, they're pretty sure they're hard wood. I think they're probably tow for it. Uh, it. It probably needs a timber expert to have a look uh, and give a report on the timbers on, in that building. Uh, they'll, they'll all be pretty good, you know, old fashioned um, use of timbers, uh, which is obviously going to add to the, um, both the character and the strength of the building, I'd say. Um, one of the issues with the uh, sloping uh, 
around the seating is that uh, it leaks. Uh, and it's very difficult to uh, stop it leaking because uh, you've got a, a ramp surface on which are mounted uh, seats on which people walk on that surface and sit on the seats and stomp their feet on where the layer of the waterproof is uh, And that's been done, and there's some pictures here with India, especially in the last paper, that shows you the state of that. It's going to be very difficult to completely move, but something has to be done to it, which is very difficult to completely move. But um, uh, as it is indeed difficult to walk through the whole building, it's, 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 uh, it, it, it throws the weather off. But part of the reason for that is that it's not lined internally, so it can breathe internally and it's ventilated internally. So the, the approach that we're uh, suggesting is. We should let that happen, and anything can be built inside uh, that it would be sealed and insulated and thermally uh, conditions in its own right. Um, the roof, uh, we need somebody needs to go and have a look at the roof. We've assumed that it needs replacement. Um, certainly, there's uh, Timbers and structural roof which need to need to enforce and that's been picked up by the engineers. But um, the uh, surface itself is pretty old and it's in short lengths of corridor. Um, nicely made, I, it might be possible to reinstate it as it is. Uh, but um, <coughs> previous people have looked at it and um, given the builder uh, a quote to replace it with modern. Approach, which would be the normal way of doing it. If you tried to restore the uh, original detail, it would probably be more expensive than potentially might be to get. On page six, uh, we've just talked about um, the walls and the cladding. Um, I think the one, one of the things that really strikes you about the building is that um, it looks in, even though it's needs uh, reparation. It looks in reasonably good condition, and it looks straight and true. It looks, it don't look wonky or, or cracked or. Uh, it must have seen quite a few seismic shakes in its time uh, in, in that position. So that gives you confidence that this, that, that it's, it's not something that's a fundamental problem from a seismic point of view. Um, But there are have been signs of rot in the external cladding. I don't think very much. There was more now than, than uh, pro up saw it. When I had a look at the building, uh, I didn't see very much either. I saw some around the base of it. I didn't make a full inspection. Um, at that time, I didn't know that I was going to be kind of doing this report. Um, but um, so we've made some allowance for uh, some remedials, but we haven't assumed that uh, we, we need to take all the cladding off and replace it. <coughs> um, as I said, the building's in a generally run down condition, um, not only inside in the change in the showering rooms, but also inside the roof tank. And uh, it's dark and dirty, a couple of features there. Uh, it's falling actually. Uh, an attempt to control birds has been made by putting some very thin mesh, uh, mesh netting up, up there, and that's what broken. Birds have got in, uh, there's bird uh, nests, and um, people have been throwing bottles up there. Uh, just not to be done, but um, it really, really needs a complete uh, clean up, new uh, control. Uh, in, in my view, it should. And uh, as we said, the change of rooms has so sort of taken out of the room beyond the means of access to the grandstand is would not comply with current uh, regulations. Uh, the stairs got open treads, 
the balance that you've got over the trains. Um, fire engineers looked at it and think that the escape distances are okay, um, but there is no uh, lift or ramp to the upstairs uh, area which is not immediately right now accessible uh, for safe and access. Um, so there's a lot of things that would be extremely difficult to bring uh, into uh, a current environment. However, if the building is successful in achieving the capital to uh, listing, um, it's likely that there'd be some leniency in uh, negotiating waivers for those issues. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and that's that's been drawn out in previous examples of, of, of buildings which are just, if you try to make them compliant, you just get to the you know, But, I mean, you just, when you're dealing with the authorities uh, in that case, you're, you start from a backward position and you have to do the case. Um, the other thing worth mentioning is that uh, uh, from a security point of view, the seating is freely accessible to members of the public throughout <coughs> the house of the Memorial Park. I'm not sure that the Memorial Park is ever completely closed. Uh, there are no security systems, uh, such as CCTV. And although the grand stand is open for use of money, there's no lighting or emergency lighting. Uh, I know that uh, if that had been opened, uh, that would be a moment. Some sort of security. But, uh, apart from people trying to hobble into a group, there's not really any sign of vandalism. Is there any fire suppression system at all? There's not at the moment. Uh, but uh, to make it comply, um, I think it's like three. I'm not a fire engineer saying a type two fire alarm system. Uh, would be needed. That's not a correct it's, it's just a detection system. We're going to be spending several million dollars on the buildings. I really want some sort of system. So we have a standard of charge. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, what we're saying is that if we did develop underneath, uh, you put uh, a type 3 power arm system in there as well. So that would be the minimum. Uh, I mean, we probably be better past this because it's now and decide that uh, just from an insurance point of view, uh, well, we've not we've not assumed uh, spent this in this distance. Um, on to page seven, um, we've done. And now this is just a possible way. We did a, a layout uh, based on the scheme that we did for the single story building. Uh, but that, did, that was developed over uh, uh, many weeks. Uh, this needed to be done in a couple of days. So we just use areas and put them in uh, in some kind of sentence or uh, a plan. Uh, it would need a deal of work to it to make it uh, you know, a really refined plan. But nevertheless, it's, it, it gives a good idea of what can be put in there, the kind of um, facilities kind of area that we can achieve. So uh, certainly from a comparative costing point of view, this is quite a valid uh, diagram. So uh, the way we're thinking of this is that, uh, that if we install the amenity facilities inside the historic grandstand, it would be conceived as a separate building uh, or a pod sitting free inside it and allowing the original and the new pod would be separately sealed, insulated, and serviced, uh, and it to maintain its own structural and environmental integrity and to optimize comfort conditions of people and energy uses to the minimum. Building services would be installed in the void between the pod and the original building. But a form of construction would be typically uh, conventional block or timber frame walls in a timber frame roof, probably. That's what we're assuming. A new concrete slab would be required for the floor. This could be also integrated into the strengthening of the uh, original building foundations. Some uh, uh, strengthening walls and also maybe columns 
are anticipated for the spectrum of your system building. You don't have to have shine through, but it has to be integrated into the design as it goes along. So the layout's primarily for a comparative cost. It's based on the facilities that have been designed into the uh, single story new amenities for the design. Uh, and there's room for most of the facilities, but not all of them. Um, the original building, uh, sorry, the, the single story amenity building is about 300 square meters in the space. space. Um, we, here we've got about 250 square meters of internal, internal space. And this layout does not include a shop, office, physio room, or upper level control rooms. It includes changing rooms, public toilets, uh, and referees rooms, and showers. Page eight uh, describes um, how uh, we're thinking of the building going inside the grandstand, and it would sit there as a separate pod and be sealed on the outside as well as uh, water cooked on the inside uh, because um, we've got showers, the condensation, uh, and that's going to be fully ventilated in service. Uh, because it's largely an unlit area, um, it's going to rely heavily on artificial lighting and artificial uh, mechanical ventilation. Uh, and interestingly, uh, the services engineers are recommending that from the, for heating we use uh, LPG gas cylinders, um, which will be accommodated in a small external uh, concrete enclosure, uh, and that would avoid the need for uh, a power upgrade, and it would be more economic for the energy use. Uh, now, a word about the fire safety. Fire engineer has looked at the uh, egress uh, arrangements in the season and has determined that in principle uh, they're okay. Uh, that's to do with escape routes uh, and the distances and the widths. So it's more to fire It's not to do with accessibility to disabled. Uh, <coughs> um, so uh, for for a refurbishment of the whole building, he's uh, suggesting a type 2 fire alarm system. Uh, and that's just a wired system with a detection system. Uh, and that doesn't save the building, it will just mean that if there was a fire there, it would uh, sound the alarm and then get out. Uh, and if there was a building uh, inside the uh, most more development inside that uh, uh, grandstand. Um, a type 3 fire safety system would also need to be installed uh, in that space as well. But just to pick up on the point that the mayor has made, uh, those systems are uh, their primary for uh, personal safety. Uh, if you're looking to, to protect the building fabric itself in the case of fire, Want to consider some different um, So uh, on page nine, uh, we're comparing. Uh, there's, a, there's a layout uh, of the new single story design uh, at the same scale as the um, sort of possible uh, layout in the. Grandstand uh, to give some idea of uh, comparison. The biggest difference that we see from the, the yellow color is the extent of the, it's quite extensive verandas in the uh, new single story scheme. Mm -hmm. um, those act as uh, a viewing, viewing platform mm -hmm. to give shelter uh, for uh, players and uh, spectators. So um, we compared, uh, we tried to make a functional comparison between the two. Um, it's, it's 
still the living, there's an, the imperative to preserve and restore the existing uh, land stand. Uh, there may be some economic advantage in constructing amenities within the building rather than constructing a separate building to house what we understand is the urgent need of changing the combination. Uh, for example, it's closer to the road than the <coughs> position. Uh, it's close to the road for access and for services. However, the, the big, uh, uh, big um, issue with, with that position is that it would be primarily be used by rugby players, possibly cricketers in the summer, uh, and will not easily meet the breach of providing facilities for all users. Uh, the new single story building uh, has been developed over a significant period of time. A number of use groups, uh, not just uh, rugby, cricket, netball, tennis, uh, uh, horse riding, um, and one or two others. I can't think of all of them, but a lot of people have been involved in that and got into that building. And it's more central. Placed in the uh, park and able to be accessed by all the park users, including uh, uh, a feature of the design is that there are some uh, there are high level control rooms, small control rooms, which are particularly useful for uh, uh, horse events, particularly netball. Um, and being a standalone building, I know this is quite important from the cost uh, and operating cost point of view. All, all the spaces inside it can be provided with excellent uh, daylight mm -hmm. and with natural ventilation, mainly natural ventilation, not going to be the good system because it can't be ventilation for the other shower areas, but um, with the height of the building and that's a low level of mother, it can operate quietly with natural ventilation, uh, which will make it. Pleasant uh, environment for it, so uh, a more natural and uh, more energy efficient environment. So, we, we believe from a functional point of view, leaving aside the design of it, uh, that, uh, that the single story uh, building will provide uh, a function and enjoyment for more of the users mm -hmm. under the, the, uh, the grandstand. I've also got a note here from the service, services engineer, uh, which basically backs up uh, what we've been saying there. Uh, he does point out that uh, the standalone building, close to the tennis courts, would need uh, <coughs> more infrastructure connections from the street with um, storm, uh, with uh, sanitary stormwater. have been raised in the engineer's reports and the surveyor has assessed those uh, from scratch and once again. Uh, also included here is uh, a building fashion. Uh, also includes for re replacing uh, areas of lot and extended family and new paint. There's a, the, the subtitle of that bid comes from $520,000. Uh, 
Uh, but the, um, the, pro the project management design is uh, stated as about 20%. It's, it's, a high, it's a high level of care and management required for this sort of structure. Uh, and he is also at this stage included 20% uh, contingency, which is uh, very good. That is uh, the nature of the information that we have currently. We can't have a really detailed investigator, uh, investigator work done on it to know exactly uh, what the box was. Um, so, roughly, roughly three quarters of a million dollars. Um, I'm just uh, as leaving aside uh, whether you think well, it's a good thing or not, um, to build a, a new grandstand. 500 people today, which I'll say something that was at least 10 times at that time. Uh, installation of amenities in the existing grand site. So uh, the point surveyor has just assessed the plan section that we've given him, uh, and he's come up with this figure of uh, 1.43. Two hundred forty-eight square meters, uh, with a rate of, which is quite a high rate, I think, five thousand seven hundred sixty-six square meters. We're, we're just we're just building at the moment, and it will be completed in the next month or two. A uh, clubhouse for a football club in Auckland. Uh, it's a bigger building than this. It's a uh, it's a similar facility with the same sort of thing. Standards and those uh, that rate is, is something just a little bit less. I think the the addition here is probably uh, with the, the fact that we put in artificial service. On the next page, um, we've taken that 1.33 figure. Uh, and then put in uh, a figure for uh, security uh, and there's a $50,000 figure which is for an accessibility upgrade in five to the existing grant. So if we put uh, accommodation inside underneath uh, the the existing structure will need to have the thresholds of the doors um, remodeled to be able to be accessible and to, to change some of the doors to get, uh, accessibility to them and um, provide higher protection. So that's what that is for $50,000 is there. And then there's a project uh, management design figure uh, and approvals and consents. Um, I think the lines are. Um, just uh, watch slightly. So the project management design figure of that figure is 225, approvals and consents is 335. So the total of that comes to 174. Uh, we can't do uh, that option without doing work to the existing grant science. So the total cost of that project is to sum of those two figures. All these figures are in the X GST, by the way. Um, and then uh, on the right hand column is a summary costs of uh, the new GST. Uh, at the end, the policy guy went through our design and he has produced an elemental summary as well, which I haven't got here. But it came to 1.750. You note that the square meter rate is slightly higher than the square meter rate that we need into the grand stand. But that does include for uh, a, a large area of verandas, the area of verandas is 436 square meters. Um, so, 
There are some other figures that we've added in here, or the US has suggested. One is 85,000 for uh, additional infrastructure, getting the drainage power from some water supply out to that site from the Yako Street. And uh, another figure of 25,000 for external uh, landscaping. And that comes to a figure of 2,166. Um, I've, got to, I've got to say here that there's a Anomaly between this figure and the figure that we recently reported uh, uh, for the single story building. Mm -hmm. uh, go through in a while. Uh, um, yeah. 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 I've got a question. I've got two questions. <coughs> First question is around heritage. Mm -hmm. So you have an iconic heritage looking building. And you put a pod inside it. How the hair, how would, in your opinion, how would hair to do that? I'm going to have Andrew Cole and have a look at this issue when he comes up, but would they still see it as a hair to build it? I think nothing to do. I think that the, um, my view is if we're putting a pod of modern accommodation inside that building, you're going to be wrecking what you're trying to say. Essentially, you've got to make. Uh, Penetrations through the skin of the building, as you're talking about, um, windows and ventilation, yeah. and doors. Uh, and um, you, you wouldn't be able to enjoy the original uh, building. I think it's worth highlighting that the original building was designed with an open space system, but it wasn't designed for, for changing space time. The second question from me is. If I'm right in my figures, so 2.484 million to put the pod inside and do up the building, 2.166 million for a new building. So if you took the 2.166 away from the 2.484, it leaves you a surplus of, let's, let's say, there was a new building. It's probably 300,000, which could go towards the 900,000 cost of restoration of the heritage building. So, in other words, am I, am I thinking right? If you put that saving against the rest and restore the existing heritage building, you're saying a basic restoration is actually a piece of that. He said that the basic restoration of the heritage building is 744,000. Mm. And you took away that 318 deficit. You could actually save both buildings, build one new one, and save the other one with an increased cost of only about 300,000. Yeah, so I've, I've actually uh, summarised that. Sorry, I'm on the recommendation. Mm. Um, what, what I've identified here is I think there are three possible routes to the pod. The first route um, is to you proceed just like a separate, a separate amenity building uh, and let the, um, do nothing to the landscape instead of going go further to repair until it needs to be built out. That would cost around 2.2 million. That wouldn't satisfy uh, the <coughs> people in China who want to save it, and it would, and it would, it would be neglected and they would walk home and find out its history. So if you go the other way and say, well, okay, we'll put this, restore the grandstand and install into it more than that, it's, that's a little bit more money, it's 2.5 million. Um, but that wouldn't suit the look, wouldn't fit the needs of the general power users. And as I said, it would involve quite a lot of interaction with the existing structure of the building. Mm -hmm. And it would be a compromise from the conservationist point of view. Um, to, my, to my way of thinking, the, the best route forward, which would be the best uh, yeah, investment. For the time, for the time, and also to satisfy the needs of most people, would be to build a single story building and just restore the uh, 
original building to its original state. In other words, uh, the outside of the seating and the space inside. So it could be a concourse area, uh, you know, that was used uh, on match days or in the main pre shows and so forth. Um, further to that, we councillors would still also have to figure out that if we put a pod in and underneath the grandstand, that would save us having to build, potentially having to replace the horseshoe shaped toilets because you provide toilets closer to the grandstand area from a reasonable standard. I don't think anybody accepts the standards of the toilet, current toilets there adequate. Whether or not that means you still have to provide toilets for the you know, park area by the swimming pool, who knows? Yeah, that could be an argument for uh, going back to the original idea, which was where, where there was a public recreation room to a basic space, and then on one side there was a ladies' club and on one side there was a gentlemen's club. You could actually install in a small part of the grandstand uh, mm -hmm. area, which would be a good facility, but it wouldn't be total revamp of the whole area. Sorry, to mm -hmm. you. If we were retaining the heritage aspect, then there's a potential discussion with Heritage New Zealand in terms of mm -hmm. subsidy. We went and said, no, we're not going to do this, we're going to retain it as is. Then that would open up a conversation. Yes, it would. it would. That would be a much stronger argument than that. Um, I think the, the other issue is um, because of the, the local interest and the central, you know, um, a lot of passionate people about their teaching, I have to it would be a good idea to think about the governance of that. Uh, project uh, being shared in some way with that community, which is all a good way of thinking about how the fund is proposed. Councillors, please. Um, uh, a couple of questions, please. Thank you. Uh, great, very helpful report. Um, in terms of the category two heritage process, uh, what uh, would you have any idea of the time expectation around um, getting an answer there? And if we got a yes, um, what would that restrict? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what would that restrict us doing for building? I'm not a heritage or a conservation architect. Yeah. Uh, I've worked <coughs> on some old buildings uh, and like old buildings, but I've not got enough experience to be able to answer your question. Okay. Uh, from what I gather. It can be it can vary enormously. Sometimes people will spend years um, getting that uh, heritage list. Okay. So it's it's not cut and dry, but it is an unusual building, I'd say. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's in relatively good structural condition. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it stands a really good opportunity, but who knows how long it will take. Yeah, I've got three questions. I'll try and roll into one. I'm assuming when it was built, it wasn't built to last forever. And <laughs> and the seven hundred and forty-four thousand, did that get it to a point where it's like you're just drawing a line in the sand and it's going to keep deteriorating? And um, yeah, at what point does it become a dying building? You know, how far away from it becoming a dying building? Oh, that's a really good question. But I think you've got to look back at the materials that they're using. Uh, you can't get them now. And so they last, they do last forever if they look after it. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest issue about it is, is, is the size of the strength line. Mm -hmm. And that's what's ever was put. You know, when that came in, uh, it, it put those sorts of buildings in doubt. And so mm -hmm. oh, we've got to spend a lot of money on the building to make it size and feel safe. You know, from it, it's, it's had a lot of shakes down there and it's not very good. So although something has to be done to make it comply in order to get through the sort of resulting good heritage and good thing. Intrinsically, it, it looks to me it's a pretty good building. Councillor Wilson. Thanks, thanks very much. Um, yeah. Just a couple of quick questions. 
looking through this report very, very quickly, which, which we've only just seen, um, I note that you're referring back to engineering reports that were done in 2009. So therefore one assumes that another engineering report would have to be done and that, as you've indicated, that's likely to indicate yeah. a greater extent of deterioration as you would expect after that period of time. So yeah, uh, that is factored in your contingency cost. Yeah. It is, okay. So secondly to that is the underground of that is going to need a geotech report. So a geotech report to do what you're considering doing with the pilot site, it would likely, I suspect, require some reasonably extensive underground works. You'd need to get a digger in there and take that slab up, which needs to come up anyway. Yeah, yeah, so there's uh, quite a, it, is yeah. that also factored in here, or is that a subsequent way well, that we haven't got in here? That's part without, of reason, without having the geotech report. That's part of the reason why there's 20% in the fees. Uh, the a proper geotech report there could cost sort of $35,000 or $100,000, I would imagine. Yeah. But the, the structural investigation report, uh, Barry Davidson, seemed to pay $15,000. Mm -hmm. So um, to get that kind of knowledge, and the other thing is to, to involve uh, Timber expert to just, just uh, survey it from a set of timber on the he would be able to sort of say, well, that's this timber, that's this timber. So then you can know what the composers of those timbers were. But I guess it's for the investigation, you know, we're talking about significant amount of money to invest in mm -hmm. that. But, but does, is that covered in $127,000 for the consistency? I mean, I well, I hope so. <laughs> I, hope so. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a difficult one. We, We've had uh, just a few weeks to put this together. We've reviewed mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that the, the structure uh, report. Uh, initially, uh, Davidson was skeptical about the structure, the structure report uh, because of uh, the background of that particular company. But he's gone through and he's validated what we said there. Um, but he needs to make a, a Visit the site and make it One of the things we need to get out of today, whether there is any further report or work that you want to see commissioned, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's niggling away in the back of me is that we could spend a couple of million dollars putting a pod inside a building that has a very, very high climate. Mm -hmm. So if I look at the grandstand that was lost in um, the wire actor, uh, I've got a grandstand there, being the ground. Yeah. Okay, risk factor sits in my mind a little bit. Further, Councillor Gordon, I think, can get Councillor Gavini. Yeah, oh, thank you for the report, Barry. Um, I've got a, a number of questions having just quickly skimmed through it. The first one would be, if we went in for the restoration of the stand, you know, whoever we is, and we just went for the open space underneath with no pods, do we have to go into the foundation systems to make this um, structure last for the next X number of years? I think it's a difference in making it last and making it well, in order to strengthen it, um, they would follow the, uh, the structure down. They are already talking about the addition of posts in. They follow the structure down and the, the, the assume the pad foundations. Um, they think that probably you have to expand those pad foundations. Um, if you're going to put a slab through there, you could use the slab to do that. And that actually is probably quite a practical one to Hence your comment around effectively cut a hole on the side, walking a digger in there and removing all the yeah. current yeah. concrete that's So in other, words, in other words, doing a complete assessment externally, yeah. get a good idea of it, and then the, the geotech could be uh, geared up to actually sort of being, doing some of the work that you actually do when you mm. Okay, I don't know, am I allowed to make a comment with which is what I was asking? Absolutely. Okay. Um, Knowing the history of Tai Happy and where they got construction material from um, at that date, and I'll give you an example, the old freezing work site that sits on my property, which was built circa 1915, all the concrete aggregate was, was dragged out of a pit called the Shergold's Pit, and it's actually just over adjacent to where our Tai Happy sewage pond is, and it's an alluvial sandstone gravel, um, it's a 
concretionary gravel. It's full of seashells and all sorts of stuff, but it's quite porous. Um, and so it was uncrushed and they used to just, but it was close. And so a lot of the foundation systems, I think around the town are made of this stuff. And they'd mix it up with a, with a cement of unknown quality. And it's just quite a lot of lime, which was great at the time. The old building that's on my property is effectively just falling to bits um, because it's porous and the water gets into it and then it dries out and then it wets up and it dries out and the concrete and the reinforcing what little was in it starts to spall and then it was sort of just crumbles away. Now, without actually digging a hole underneath the grandstand and taking a sledgehammer to it, you're not going to know. No. But that is the risk. And I think 1923, 24 construction, I would suspect that they were probably getting the same aggregate material. And given that I think the old Fry Happy dump site is sitting on another quarry, quarried the same stuff, and there's another quarry just above that site. So this was a common gravel. Why, you know, drag it 500 meters instead of 5 Ks, it's easy. So I think that's something to think about. Um, the I don't structure, know though, is it not concrete. Correct. No, it's just what it is. Yeah. Primary or timber. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just a couple of comments. Um, one must have been. Um, a grandstand did, has been burnt down, another one has been saved beautifully, so yeah. um, there, there's that opportunity. But I'm just um, aware of the facilities in the bowling club and don't think we're making the most of those amenities that are there in terms of if, if we put a 24-hour shower in there um and and, and uh, you know a, a more better usable space there and I'm just, yeah I've, I've said it all along I think that something could be better utilized for <coughs> that top end of the park in that location yeah. um, look, I'm certainly open up questions at the start because uh, I'll hate to start to go away Questions for the clarification that, that you were asking. Um, thank you, Your Worship. If I may, I think I'm kind of picking up on what Dave was saying. It sounds to me very much what you were saying. And they asked for some real substantial unknowns in the board. So the three you mentioned was the seismic strengthening, so we need a new report on that, the geotechnic foundations, and also the roof. And if any of those come back with substantial requirements, that could change the 744 to a much larger number, I would imagine. Well, uh, included in that figure, that 744 was complete replacement of the roof. So is that? Yeah. Right. 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 A sprinkler system through the entire building, both the, the tiered seating and underneath. Is um, that 100,000, 50,000? I think it's somewhere between 50 and 100,000. Okay. We could have a figure on that. That's not in any of the numbers. That's not in any. Okay. Thank you. Question. Uh, I have some questions and comments, of course, on that, please, Your Worship. Um, firstly, uh, if, if there was the option of Looking at the 744, um, if we were, if sorry, if the council was to choose a separate standalone building and to refurbish this one, would the cost of removing the guts of the existing changing rooms and all that kind of stuff be included in that 744? Yeah, it would be. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, and the second thing I was just say from a comic point of view, uh, our capital budget this year. Uh, and our annual plan was $2 million for this, and we've spent roughly on the bits and pieces today, I, I would imagine, including the work that's been done in the recent few weeks, probably in the, in the order of 20000 uh, and that was for this financial year. Effectively, that would mean you could go close to rebuilding the this now, yes. in this financial year, mm -hmm. and treat the Yes, but I don't want to get on the stage of discussion about yeah. options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Barry, for this report that's provided some real clarity on some of those options. Um, probably this is a question maybe of staff in regards 
you put some figures in there in regards with project management, and they're fairly significant. Um, project management and design, 279,000. Um, a staffing question, I would presume that would be covered by, well, the project management aspect of it would be covered by um, our internal project management team. I don't know what's going to take that there on that. Um, I think that figure, that project management design and supervision is approximately 15%. So that should cover for the, the whole design uh, and architecture. Uh, it would probably pay for a separate project management in that 15%. Within that. Project. So that would, it would be additional. Additional to that. Um, thank you, both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I think the QS has put those figures together 13.5%. He's, he's assumed the project, separate project, project management, which would have been uh, probably about 2%. Okay. But so, what, what I'm getting at is that we've got that capability within the council now and and I would expect that that figure would reduce, um, or is that a direct charge? That, that wage or yeah. contract would be a direct charge out of this project. If I can just ask, Barry, uh, if we look at the, the bulls building again, it's this is known, uh, professional fees, is that included in those numbers? Uh, I, I would imagine that that's not that thing, nine would be more professional fees. So if you think of structural yeah. engineers, uh, mm. fire engineers, all yeah. the other professional fees, and it's normally a large sum. That potentially could be a little bit skinny for it. Mm. Mm. 279, but I think 279 and probably the other building might be a little, a little mm. conservative. I don't, I don't, normally the QS wouldn't include for internal project management. No. Internal client project management, it would be an external consultant. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. we're getting to a stage where. <coughs> information that you would require at the council decision, yes or no, next month. But what I'd anticipate staff going back to us with the board saying, this is the information you can provide a court. Mm -hmm. These are the options for the decision process. So how do you see it? Yes, it would be good to document any particular things on Barry's report that um, these members may wish us to focus on in the report. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Essentially, is there any further information But what specific clarity around our um, asset infrastructure uh, in regards with stormwater and water services? I mean, there's a figure being put on there, but our staff should be able to provide some accurate information around that um, to access that standalone site um, from the uh, western side of the team also Yes, yeah, all, yeah, all services. Well, you both have. Um, <laughs> the comment would be that with respect to stormwater drainage, there's a stormwater drain underneath the tennis court that goes right past the northwestern corner of the site. Across the swimming pool over the bank. So that's an easy one. But, you know, it's a, it's a operational task to know how big and how long and all that kind of stuff. Power does come to the Wicker Street extension or the pole there, but I don't know what capacity of that line is. I mean, whether it's a transform on it or not. You know, it's a transform of that 300 meters away. It's all part of that report. Just, sorry, one other question was around toilet access. Uh, on the standalone site, would there be a 24 hour provision for public toilets to access to that? That's right, thank you. Right, Barry, I'll close. Sorry, um, sorry to hold you up, uh, Richard. I just would like just a little bit more uh, clarity around uh, Council Fish and Belshin. Really, really appreciate that project management design. I don't think we really broke that one down quite clearly asked me as to what's actually included. It said provision for. Project environment, mine and supervision are three quite of things. So if we could get some sort of breakdown, that would be quite a good idea just to understand what that's made up of. Councillor, you're right. I'm going to go to this state. I'll end with you.
Um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for the report um, that's been um, put forward. Um, it's from my point of view, it's, um, some of the options that have been put up, and I know we're not talking about it at the moment, but actually um, could satisfy our community in that area. So it's good that there's been a spread of options. Um, and I know that there's no voting on that today, but um, I just wanted to say that um, thank you for the work that's gone into it so far. Sorry. Um, in the spirit of uh, Bill's this again, uh, would elected members like to see numbers where they are currently excluded around furniture, fittings, security, office, fit out, physio room, fit out, etc. Et 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 I don't think that's relevant for this stage of because if we're comparing apples with apples in this, we've got to have it. If it's not in one, it's not in the other. We're only simply looking at the options that are in front of us. But if we then start to go down, it'll be a hell of a lot of work without actually, actually mm. deciding which way you go. Because <laughs> one will have different costs associated with each other. So it's still at the cost of the community. One of the least more than the problems we have to be Yeah, I just. I put a vision somewhere. I'll, yeah. I'll um, call it to you. Okay, thank you. I like to the people that you are from. I have the for the number of I think it's something very apparent and steady. Thank you. 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 Thank Right. And moving back to item number 11, the application of the parks upgrade partnership fund. This is an increase for $50,000 for Martin School for the pump track. Um, sorry, Mara. Have we got clarity around where there is money within that existing upgrade budget? Yes. And there it is? There is. There is. Yes. So there's basically about 125 grand's worth of budget in two different cost centers. 25 grand of that's been spent. And I believe 50 grand's been allocated to another purpose with these 50 days. Right. So, would somebody be bold and easy for a motion to either elect to fund or not to fund? That's what it's absolutely happy to do. You're prepared to move that we, um, we agree to support your request for $50,000. Looking for a second to do that. Thank you, Councillor Delgu. You wish to speak to the motion? Yes, certainly. Um, I think what we're doing is, is fantastic. It, con it, it continues the story that's happening within um, Martin's upgrades. Uh, I think any opportunity that we can um, give to our, to our young people to increase their activity, um, opportunities to engage with one another in outside spaces and um, by safety, the whole lot, it ticks every single box. And I think an opportunity to support that is um, well worth the investment. Thank you. Uh, when I saw this request uh, come in front of the council, I thought that that fund uh, that we we're applying to was specifically upgrading our council parks and reserves. After reading the information in there, um, and seeing the support from the Ministry of Education towards this uh, concept of it being a fully accessible um, pub track or facility for the whole community. Uh, and also, the, um, I guess, the, the thing we've already provided out at Rashima, uh, the funding we're providing out towards Rashima. Um, I am in favour and supportive of this. However, I would like to see a um, a well-worded MOU um, pro progressed as part of this funding application 
and um, I would like to see that come through council before we finally sign off the fifty thousand mm. dollar um, supporting yeah. that affords it. So um, a well worded MOU that, that fully describes access, uh, maintenance, all of those sort of things. So that's set down in concrete before we actually give this um, give this okay. Mm. Um, I'll speak to this one. I'll support the application. I only hesitate for is around, for instance, uh, charity and Charlotte for the Chai Happy, not going to develop the Chai Happy one. Mm. <clears throat> um, but when I think about it, they are probably a minimum of six months away from having a really good proposal in front of us. Um, if they had a proposal sitting on our table now, my view would be not to support this, to use the budget for Chai Happy. So I'm speaking in support of this. Anybody that's three speakers in support, anybody speaking against? I'd like to see a bit of clarity around the um, the actual wording of the motion, if you wish it. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, it says the council considers the request. So does that need to be approved? Does that it's approved, but somebody was subject to what Council Dodge yes. was saying. Yeah. So council either approves the request or does not consider it. So if it approves. Should there not be subject to uh, an agreed MOU between mm -hmm. Chief Executive Council staff and Council? I'm happy to move that amendment um, or support your amendment if you're moving it possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, so Council approved the MOU mm -hmm. prior to granting them funds. Mm -hmm. We'll just um, follow that up now. Yeah, um, in that in MOU, I think it's absolutely imperative that there's something in there around when the wheels fall off. Because I've noted to the north what has happened with things like this dealing with the ministry. And when relationships fall over, ultimately government writes its own rules. So we have to look after our investment. I'll be the devil's advocate in this one. In whatever shape that might fall. Right. Does that mean you can back to council for approval? I think not. I'm happy if the staff can accept it, the delegated acceptance of the MOU because it's about public access. Mm. I'm, I'm a little bit relaxed around that. I think they get the intent. Do you want to talk back to council before approval? I don't. I, I'm, I'm quite happy to draft it and enter the negotiation. If it doesn't, sorry. If it doesn't come back to council, I think it should be a delegated group of councillors. So there's an elected <coughs> members perspective. It's just a mm. So I just want to be clear when, um, sorry, um, when it said that. Our investment, we we are. That does does that? Are we saying that, that we have that we're having um, some control over what happens within it? Because uh, to, to me, it's we're giving a we're giving like um, funding towards the debt. We're not giving full funding toward it, towards it, but we're giving some funding towards it. Is that right, or is that not right? It's in, the, it's in the letter of application around the total cost. So we're contributing to yes. so, um, Ashfield and so on, no yes. quotes and supply agreements, and um, the school is contributing to If I may, I think the question arose because Councillor Gordon used the word investment. Mm. And it's yes. not an investment, it's a grant. Yes, so we, right. we don't that's want exactly any ownership right. of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a grant. It's a grant. It's a completely yeah. different yeah. way of looking at things. If With regard that. to the agreed MOU, I think if we pass this and then you put a motion on the floor around giving a delegation to somebody yeah. to approve the MOU, would you be happy with that? Uh, yeah, I'll have to put a secondary, second motion there to support that. Is there any? Any further speakers to the motion that's on the table at the moment? Yes, so we're paying out of a capital budget. Uh, I'm not sure we'd be um, 
partnerships funding as a part of working out their budget. The budgets on the budgets I quoted earlier were capital budgets. It's a grant to donation, which is an operational cost. I can only go on the fact that you gave, gave us. Uh, I was yeah, so I, I was talking about capital budgets when I when I mentioned them two hundred and twenty-five grand. That's a capital budget in this year's budget. The grants wouldn't be a capital cost. I think I need some time to get this one through. I think you need to have a talk. Because I do need clarity. It does make a significant difference. Mm -hmm. Councils have been to capital. If it's a capital budget, we can loan fund it over a period of time. It's a straight grant that comes out operational. So, so I'll, again, I'll let that motion sit on the floor with approval of the mover and second it. Um, so moving then to can we get somebody to move the receipt of the next five months? The receipt of the minutes as a block. I don't have any. That's about those. That's about those minutes. So, um, in, in the interest of following the process, um, the minutes haven't been taken today. I suppose I've got no problem with the. Grants and the committee minutes coming here, but assets and infrastructure, for example, they need to be confirmed by the own committee first. And I would be suggesting that they come back to council once the committee has agreed that the Aye. minutes are correct and accurate. Then they come to council for endorsing. That's the process mm -hmm. that should really be followed. However, if you do that, and the recommendations that come out of them. But what, so it it to an act. Yes, and what <coughs> I was suggesting is that we actually have the recommendations coming to the council, but the minutes don't come until they've been confirmed by the commission. But then you're approving the recommendations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be prepared. I just thought we have received these minutes before and there have been um, alterations requested in those minutes but it's had to go back to that committee too so it's been before they've actually been approved at the next committee meeting so yeah I, I thought we have received them before and yeah but it, it, without them being approved by as um, accurate records by the uh, by the committee, mm -hmm. yeah. And that, I mean that, that's always been the case because people have questioned some of those minutes, uh, but we can't do anything about them. What we're doing is receiving them. Mm -hmm. um, they've, they've got to be attended to by the. I have essentially I have a difficulty about approving recommendations for something that we're not in receipt of. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather that we receive them. Uh, well, we went back to the <coughs> So um, they haven't been tabled no. today. Um, from the chair, I'm prepared to move towards the recommendations, but in the future, I think I'd like to see the seat of them. Um, are you happy if we, councillors, if we receive them unsighted at this stage? Okay. <laughs> I think we can only receive the ones that have been supplied. Yeah. Yes. We can't receive the ones that we haven't even had table yet. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Would somebody like to so make the receipt of I will, but I had a question that we should as well. And it's a process question, not a question of. Okay, so you move it back. I'm quite happy to move. Can I just try it out? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so, so my it's a, it's a big picture um, question really 
in receiving a minute, do we infer that it's true and correct? Because I think this is the fundamental question. Or are we just receiving a draft minute? Yeah. Yeah. I would, wouldn't think that anyone, apart from the, the committee meeting of which the minutes were generated from, yeah. could uh, move them to be a true and correct record. Right. I wouldn't have thought. Yeah. Uh, I would have thought since yeah. back to the committee meeting. Yeah. Exactly. Put this to the vote. First of all, that we receive those ones. Those in favour? Aye. 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 Those against? Carried. Thank you. And the recommendation that we have in front of us is from the Community Grant Subcommittee anyway. We've received that one, so it's quite proper that we deal with it. I'd be happy to um, move that as chair of that committee. Thank you. Seconded by? Thank you. Dalgetty, seconding. That's I don't think we need a discussion on this one. Thank you, Councillor Ash. Yeah, I don't know that I would be voting for this to be um, fair, as much as I'd love to see loads of money available for events through the district and definitely see the, the value for them. Um, for the most part, events can apply for external funding um, much greater than what Council can without an effect on ratepayers. Um, I don't know. I think I think there's possibly an opportunity for council to work with event uh, organisers to support them should they need to understand a little bit more about applying to I just, stuff. I'll go back to a more formal process now. I think uh, Council Bilsha, you moved it. Oh yeah. So if you could speak to it, I'll come back to you, Councillor Council Bilsha. Thank you, Worship. <coughs> this was raised by the committee as um, when we see the applications come in, they are extremely oversubscribed and it feels like we are under supporting a lot of the events that happen within our district. And every it was unanimous that every member of that committee said, look, um, to make to be effective um, as a committee, um, we should be we should be supporting them with more money. Now this um, this motion uh, basically takes that to the long-term plan process. It's not about voting that we're going to bring it in uh, by voting across the board. This is taken it through the long-term plan process and then you have a decision to speak to it then, but this literally is just getting it in, into the decision-making process. So back to Councillor Ash. I said everything. <laughs> so you're aware. Yeah. Okay, no, and, and, and given that it's going through the LTP process, I feel comfortable with that. That's, I, I still believe we could do more in the supporting them. No, I should have pointed that out before I jumped in, but it's just taking an option for it. Any other speakers? Councillor Dalgetty. It would also assist um, organisations that don't have charitable trusts uh, for, you know, for formal status. Uh, um, so sometimes it's hard for them to apply for some of that funding. Yeah. Any further speakers of right to reply? No. Vote for the vote, those in favour? No. Those against? Carried. Sorry, I shouldn't have jumped in because I assumed everybody would be understanding it. Um, right, do we now have an answer? Any yeah, advice? <laughs> Um, and, and when considering the uh, budget and the annual plan, we had set aside $125,000 in the capital budget. The capital budget. Why? Uh, of that, $25,000 has gone to uh, Memorial Park uh, upgrade for lighting. That's a capital asset. Council own, we appreciate. 50,000 of that has gone towards Martin Playground. It's a capital asset that we own. And now we're faced with a grant. And of course, this will signal how we treat this in the future because we never know if we're actually going to own the asset or not. And as a grant, it becomes an operational uh, and it completely changes things. Now, um, I think Gable will explain it a little bit more. It, it, 
if it's a grant, it would therefore become an unbudgeted operation expenditure. Um, because we would, as a capital feature, it would be debt funded. So Dave, can you just sort of comment on the implications of that? Okay, so from a cash perspective, it makes no difference. We're gonna give this organization 50K to go and build something which the capital budget, the spirit behind the capital budget was to end up with a recreational asset that the public can enjoy. It just so happens that this opportunity in front of us means that we won't end up owning that asset. Mm -hmm. So the cash will come out of the bank exactly the same, the end result will be exactly the same, the public benefits exactly the same, but the budget's sitting in the capital bucket and not the operational bucket. So a simple way forward can simply be we agree to spend it out of OPEX and have an unbudgeted OPEX spend, but also not spend the capital budget sitting in the capital budget. So we'd have an unspent capital budget of 50 and an unbudgeted operational spend of 50. Cash-wise, cash we're exactly the same. End result, exactly the same. But it's two budget variances of 50 grand that offset each other. So what you're suggesting is that if we approve this, then we consider a second motion, which would say that the unspent 50,000 sitting in this Budget, capital budget. Uh, yeah. Now, well, when do we go through and change? repurposing it because you'll take it away for something else. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we got remain unspent just financially. My suggestion yeah. would be that we, if, should we, should you go and approve this, um, you, you make a note that the 50k of the park's capital budget will remain unspent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there will be a, a line of budget overrun in, in the operational budget of 50k that's approved. Did we really have to do that? Because Sorry. rather than putting a motion on the floor to do that, just jump <coughs> ahead, to it, would it not be better if, if somebody this financial year came to us with an application, then it would be raised at the issue then? application for say so somebody else came to us this financial year and said we want 50,000 then you point out well effectively you spent that that level of budget elsewhere and rather than have a separate motion do you really need something uh, no no i just thought you, I, I, I just sense that you might be more comfortable with something I, i'd be happy just noting it okay so, yeah. an alternative might be to in this resolution of this motion um, at the end of it, comma, noting that. Noting that this now takes the level from the thing we had to purpose for. Parks up front. Parks up front. Councillor Ash, you were the one who moved this. Um, are you okay with that? Yep, absolutely. Councillor Delgetti, you second it. Mm -hmm. Right, so said we okay that we now know enough to go to a vote? Let's go for it. Those in favour? Aye. 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 Those against? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. That tidies up. Two, two. I have no further late items. Yes, I do. Sorry, we should just finishing off that we spoke about the MOU process. Um, so if we could add a um, recommendation there that an MOU is de developed jointly between. Sorry. That an MOU is developed jointly between council staff and a delegation of elected. Made up, made up of, and I guess we can take names now. Delegate name, no, you would be developed between council staff and the recipient of the school. Yes, to sorry. be approved for yeah. Who wants to be in there? <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Belsham, 